Hello to everyone. Kelly and I are thrilled to be able to share our experience we had in setting up and teaching the first green chemistry centered undergraduate course at UC Berkeley, which both of us taught last spring semester. My name is Kylie Sun Marcus. I am a undergraduate chemistry student at the Free University in Berlin, and I did a year abroad at UC Berkeley. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Chow. I'm a recent UC Berkeley grad studying chemistry. And finally, we were advised by Thomas McCaig to round out our teaching team. To give you a quick overview of what we'll be discussing today, we'll start off with our motivation for starting this course, then go over the course goals as well as the curriculum and share some results and a reflection. Kylie and I went through a number of undergraduate chemistry courses at both UC Berkeley and Free University Berlin. Through our experiences in those classes, we identified a number of gaps present in the required major courses. First, that the curriculums trained students to become researchers and producers of chemicals, but did not train students on how to become knowledgeable consumers of chemical products. We saw this as an imbalance of information that was an opportunity for new learning. Secondly, toxicology was not a required course. Students instead had to go out of their way to take an additional four unit course as an elective. Finally, there was a lack of green chemistry content available to undergraduate students. The only dedicated course on green chemistry was limited to senior level undergraduates and graduate students. So this topic was locked off to a large part of the student population. Taking these factors into account, Kylie and I decided to address the gaps we saw by developing the first undergraduate green chemistry course at UC Berkeley through the campus's DECAL program, a platform for courses made by students and for students, generally taken for one to two units, pass no pass. So in defining these gaps that we saw in the existing undergraduate chemistry courses, we quickly were able to outline a new course that encompassed all the things that we as undergraduate chemistry students wanted to learn. We identified three overlying concepts that were addressed within this course. We started with the key concepts of green and sustainable chemistry and defined sustainability from both the chemists and the consumer's point of view. One being focused on developing benign chemicals or processes whilst the other defining sustainability in more broad terms. Consumer choices these days have shifted to encompass the environmental, social, and financial aspects within a product. Secondly, with close to two thirds of our class being non-chemistry majors, chemical literacy was a big portion that we dedicated to our class. We wanted to erase the stigma around chemistry and introduce non-majors to common terminology and fundamental concepts within chemistry and toxicology. And finally, green chemistry education goes hand in hand with the concept of systems thinking. In the case of consumer products, the main point we wanted to address was that the idea that these products come with a life cycle, they don't exist in a vacuum. And thinking in terms of circularity, how can we intervene at each step of the process to prevent harm? Now we'll be taking a closer look at the details of the design of the curriculum itself. Each week's lecture featured a case study of a different consumer product. For example, one week would be centered around cosmetics while another focused on plastics. In each case study, we followed a relatively consistent pattern of starting with a historical context for the product to identify the key functions it serves and the needs it addresses. This was followed by breaking down the product into its main chemical components to analyze their function and identify the unique usefulness of that specific chemistry, as well as touch upon the substances of concern that may be present in these very same products. Finally, these ideas were tied together to larger conversations about green chemistry to discuss the potential for improvements of these products. Here we'll show a few lecture slides lifted directly from the course to showcase the structure and features of our lectures. Here we have an introductory history slide to put current use of these products into context. We found it very useful to show the evolution of certain products from their early forms and how consumers' demands have changed to become more sophisticated over time. Demands are increasing from pure performance to more encompassing of health and environmental safety. 
This is a typical chemistry of the chemical ingredient slide. Here you will see that we don't shy away from using complete chemical names or chemical structures in order to uh, familiarize our students and reduce aversion to seeing and talking about these ingredients. At the same time, uh, we aim to provide a graphical representation alongside so that the information can be more easily accessed by students without a chemistry background. Finally, we ended most classes with a discussion period in which we open the door for students to connect the learnings to broader questions they may still have or respond to the question posed by us to begin a conversation. We assessed student learning for most weeks through weekly readings and quizzes given via Google Forms. Within these quizzes, we asked our students content-related questions in order to have them relay the learned information back to us using their own words. The big end of the semester project came in the form of a final research video project. This slide is what we gave our students as their project brief. They were asked to create a 10 to 15 minute video on a product within a class, at one of the six classes as defined by Green Science Policy Institute. They were then supposed to briefly outline the class introduce and analyze the components within their chosen consumer good, and then describe qualitatively the ideal version of this product. So how did they as the consumer want it to perform? We asked them to implement concepts that we covered within the class, such as cradle to cradle, principles of green chemistry, et cetera. So the results of the class, we conducted a survey at the end of the semester and asked our students for feedback. And all 24 of them came back with very positive and constructive feedback. We would like to give you a moment to read through these two select comments of our students. The first being a business graduate student and the second being a chemistry undergraduate student. So starting off, these two students will have had very apparent differences in how comfortable they were navigating the chemistry world than being business students versus a chemistry student. However, after taking this class, we can see that the pure consumer was able to become more comfortable with chemistry terms, while chemists gained a new perspective on consumer goods and the applications of chemistry. So these two definitions of green and sustainable chemistry we brought up earlier merged with one another within each and every student. One of the main strengths of the idea of centering a green chemistry course around consumer products is that it's just a baseline for what can be both refined and transformed in future classes. In terms of refinement, the current content could be focused to center more strongly on sustainability and economic perspectives, which has been done for two semesters following our original version of the course, led by two of our former students. There is also room for implementation of broader concepts, such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals or planetary boundaries. Lastly, the course can take on a greater focus for assessments, activities, and project-based learning. In terms of how this curriculum can be transformed to something greater than itself, our main takeaway was that this class has been a proof of concept that teaching chemistry within the context of everyday products is, is effective in bridging the gap between the chemist and the consumer. That means that this framework can be applied to different grade, le grade levels and learning objectives. You could use singular case studies and turn them into a module within a general chemistry class to help contextualize new learned concepts and opportunities arise to develop labs pertaining to everyday chemistry. If any of this sounds interesting to you, we'd be more than happy to collaborate on developing any of these. Finally, we'd like to give a big thanks to our advisor and mentor, Thomas McCaig, um, our guest speakers, Kai Johnson of Method and Lauren Erie and Jacob Zamooch. Our students, um, especially John V. Patel and Grayson Teals, as well as our other students of Making Green the Chemistry Consumer Products. And finally, for the support of this conference, Dr. Laura Armstrong and Dr. Michelle Dusky. 
Thanks so much. Um, we have our contact information listed here. Please free, feel free to reach out if there's any interest.